We are at Gift City in Gandhinagar, and I am joined by Mr. Sanjeev Sanyal. Thank you so much, sir, for taking out the time to talk to us. Uh, you know, Gift City has. Uh, We've seen kind of an expansion and everything, right? Uh, but where do you think the next uh, thing that Gift City should be focusing on as far as getting more inflows for that matter? So, Gift IFSC is finally reaching critical mass, which is great to see. It's a, several years of effort, but now you can clearly see the buildings are coming up, large numbers of institutions are relocating here, new areas are being built up like leasing of aircraft and ships. Uh, there's also movement towards creating international global um, dollar uh, 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 clearance and so on. So many, many new things are being now tried. Maybe many of them will work, some may not, but the point is this is the real buzz of a financial hub. You can feel it here already. So that is the real thing that I think is being, uh, that is really coming up. Now, I think the real what should I say, the opportunity here is, you see, as we become the world's third largest economy, we can't just think of gift as like a gateway of global finance into India. We need to have an ambition of turning gift uh, into a international financial center for the world. Um, in other words, this is the place where we set global norms, we set global regulations, we create global KYC, we um, you know, do credit rating for the world, sovereign ratings of the world. This is really something I think we should aspire to do. And uh, this is, of course, you know, uh, there are other successful financial hubs in Singapore, Dubai, Hong Kong, etc. But even today, um, this is a space that is completely even today in the North Atlantic. And I think if anyone can really enter this space, a new uh, entity that can enter the space, I think it would be India. We have the capability and we will, we are now big, even, you know, India's critical mass of, uh, uh, of, uh, of economic clout. Um, we should be able to kind of begin to, you know, challenge the uh, existing North Atlantic monopoly on this. You know, as you mentioned, India is in, on its part to become the third largest world economy and we've seen quite a positive surprise on the GDP numbers and yesterday RBI also raised the GDP forecast for the next financial year. So what kind of trend have you been seeing? Like where exactly is most of this growth coming from? So let it be uh, clear that, you know, we are generating 7% GDP growth rate at a time where the world is in uh, complete turmoil. I mean, much of the world is going into recession or finding it very difficult to sustain growth, even true of China, by the way. So this is, uh, I mean, I would say very creditable, and we are doing it without stressing the economy. So, the, you know, the banking system is in rude health, inflation is not spiraling away, our current account is not blowing up. So we are doing this 7% growth rate under difficult circumstances with macroeconomic uh, indicators being very stable. What it means is that if those circumstances change for the better, and, you know, the world economy goes through cycles, if you have good world, we'll easily manage to sustain 8% plus growth rates. And, you know, I keep telling people that, look, the economic machinery we have built is easily capable of exceeding 8%. Give us a clear road and we'll do it. But even with these rough roads that we have from the global economy, with really exports not helping our cause too much, we are doing quite, uh, without stressing ourselves, 7% growth. Right, so and I think it's coming from manufacturing as you, you know, and also construction activity. Uh, what about private consumption, you know, because start of the year, there were many of these indicators that suggested India is seeing a lot of key-shaped recovery. So, so, so I think one, you could clarify on that. one important thing is that, you know, first of all, this growth is generally coming from manufacturing. It is coming from investment. And yes, we are generating a dynamic investment-driven growth. Consumption is not dying out. It is still growing and growing quite strongly. I mean, look at, you know, car sales and other things. I mean, they have been quite strong. But I think people want both investment and, and consumption to grow rapidly. This is not a meaningful way of thinking about economics. I'm sorry. If you want rapid growth in both uh, investment and consumption, you'll end up with a current account uh, blowout. So this can only be done in a way in which investment will outpace consumption because then you will have savings will be big enough to be able to support that investment. So, yes, I want consumption to grow, but I am of the view that an investment-driven growth model is a much more sustainable because it, it generates both demand and also the capacity to feed that uh, demand. So as we tip into an investment-driven 
system, we should get used to our savings rate going up rather than our consumption rate going up. So one more last understanding from you since you're with us, our urban and rural economy. You know, there, if you could give us some trends to understand what exactly is contributing to what. Well, I mean, the, the, the growth is coming from all across the, the country. I mean, uh, agricultural growth in the latest quarter wasn't strong. There were weather-related issues, of course. But I think you should understand that even our rural economy is no longer driven by agriculture. People, people tend to get confused by this. Um, India's rural economy is, as, is more about services and industry than it is about agriculture. And while we do want our agriculture sector to, to do well, uh, do realize that the value addition now is increasingly in agribusiness, in, in, in logistics and other things, even in, in the agriculture sector. And so, you know, what we, what we are seeing here is the growth we are seeing in construction uh, and industry, etc. A lot of it is rural. In fact, you know, the massive infrastructure, a lot of it is being built in rural areas. And that is allowing a lot of other activities to happen in rural areas, for example, tourism and other things. So we need to... While agriculture remains important, we need to begin to stop thinking of our rural areas as purely agricultural areas. Okay. Thank you so Thank much, you sir, so for much. your time.